<laughs> yeah. This is my kayak. Get yourself one. Fish on. Yeah. Mm. Oh my God. Look at that tank. That's a toad, brother. Golly. All right, guys, so for today's video, I've enlisted the help of my good friend, Gene, the Fluke Master Jensen. This is one thing that I will have to admit Gene has more experience at than I do. He has helped out at Westbrook Supply, put together about three dozen of these. 100,000. I've put together three. Uh, I was going to put together a fourth one, but John at Yak Attack made me eat a pocket chip, and I was about to throw up, so I didn't even finish putting that one together. So I've gotten a couple more under my belt since then. But guys, listen, we're gonna, we're gonna do this for you. We don't read instructions as men. That's just how it works. Or even woe men, because men's built in it. So we're just gonna walk you through how to do it. We're gonna show you some of the lessons we've learned along the way to make it easier. And uh, you can read the instructions if you want to. For example, the first thing the instruction tells you not to do is use the old power tool. But we know you're gonna use a power tool. So here's what we're gonna tell you. Use the power tool on the lowest setting. Make sure that it's not gonna strip the screw out. And just make sure you finish it up with the old fashioned twist operated manual screwdriver so you don't mess up your awesome black pack. So without further ado, man, let's get these things out the box and get to it. So first and foremost, be organized. Save this box, cause it's a really cool box. Take these instructions and like I said, just kinda toss them over to the side. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take these bags out, these contents out. We're gonna set these rod holders over here on the ground, just like so. And then we're just gonna go on and get out the old core of the black pack. Put this sticker somewhere safe, like back in the box, because you're gonna wanna use that. We're gonna be doing some giveaways this year with some Yak Attack stickers for some Yak Attack prize packs. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, take this box and like I said, save it because it makes a really cool box. So Gene, what's your recommendation on where to start this whole project? Well, what I always do is I pull everything out, okay. kind of lay it out so I can see what it is. And I've done it enough times so I know what's in the bags, but you have hinge parts, you have a bunch of stuff in kit C that you want to get to kind of towards the end. Uh, this is stuff for the, uh, for the rod tubes. I put those off to the side. First thing you're going to need is kit A, of course. It's all uh, dummy coated. D and this should be B. And so you're going to start with A, B, C, and D. All right, so all the bases are black. No reason for them to be any other color. Your lid is the one that has the, the angles at the top. That's going to be one of the last things you pull up. So I'm going to lay that off to the side, get it out of the way. And then you've got all your sides. Now, it's easy. The yak attack goes straight up and down. So I start by you slide the, the base into the base of the, into the bottom of the of the side. Then I roll that thing up on its side like this and I'm just gonna work it all the way around by lining everything up. And the instructions tell you don't tell you to do it this way, but I have found it a lot faster and a lot easier. You just gotta kind of hold everything together and be real careful as you rotate it around. Keep getting my shirt stuck in it. I'm doing something wrong. And once you figure out how the first one goes in and then the second one goes, uh, snaps into it, then it's pretty easy. But then with the last one, you flip it up and the, you have to pull this out, slide this in right here, just like this, and then kind of push everything together. It's kind of tricky. The hardest one to put in, but it's actually really tricky. There we go. Slide that in. Maybe that if we in. follow the instructions, it would actually go together. Better. No, it goes together. See, I've got it together just like this. Okay, so it, of course it's going to fall apart if I shake it too much. But this is why I say this is faster. Once I have it all pretty snug. I just grab a handful of screws and I start dropping the screws. Just a little quarter turn to hold them there. What the hell did I do wrong? Here? I just drop the screws in the holes. I'm making Chad look bad now. That's fine. We already prefaced this by saying yep. you've done this 
quite a bit more than I these. I stopped short. Mosquitoes love me, by the way. Um, by the way, if you're ever going camping, invite Gene. Gene is the best mosquito repellent on the planet. Yeah, they all find me. They, they think he's sweet for some reason, and they will. you will not have to mess with a mosquito the whole time you're camping because they will all go after him. But you notice how, and this is a new drill, so the, so the uh, torque on it is not, it's too tight, so I don't even get close to having it tightened down. I do that all with a screwdriver. While we're doing this, I'm gonna tell you guys a story about camping with Gene. I'm sorry, night fishing with Gene. I go night fishing with Gene one time. Gee. And it sounds like somebody's having a meat slapping contest <laughs> over to the side. And I said, dude, what is wrong? Because we don't fish with any lights on. I said, dude, what is wrong? And Gene said, dude, these mosquitoes are killing me. They're not killing you? I said, dude, I have not been bit by a mosquito all night. And I was like, are you serious? He's like, and I can see him in the moonlight. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I turned my headlight on, and I'm not kidding you. It, he had mosquito bodies just all on his neck, all on his face. It looked like somebody took just mosquito makeup and just stuck it all over his face. He had welts everywhere. I was like, I have literally not gotten bitten one time. This dude looked like he had been mauled by like angry mutant mosquitoes. I got that sweet blood. That's what it is. All right, stop for a second. So just like I'm these other knuckleheads out okay. there that might be having a problem. I got to the point where I just didn't. Yeah, the hard it wasn't part. coming together right. What did so I do wrong? What you want to do is I got to get it turned the way I normally put it together, which is like this. Okay. okay. All right. So that's like this. And I have I pull this part out. Okay, slide it and, in. No, nope, drop this in here. Okay. This is real world stuff, people. Oh, it's because you back in, son. Huh? Hold on. You're totally out of warmth. Out of. You, so if you start wrong. Yeah, he completely wrong. started wrong. So let's run through your startup process one more time. Okay. That way the folks. So what I do out. is okay. you. You see this little piece right here? Yep. You got to make sure that piece goes over, and that's where you start. Aha, you started wrong. Right. So pro tip. Yep. You started wrong. Let's show this a little bit closer. So the first thing you got to do is when you get ready to put that piece in, you got to take this little notch right here and line it up with that little groove. And every that way that's flush. And every single one of them goes like in that. like that. Yep. Cool. And so once you do that, once you do that, you should be able to do it all the way around. Should be able to drop that there and it falls right into place. And then just rotate it. Rotate it. Bam. Again, just like your paddle has the decal right side up, for yeah. all you upside down paddlers out there, <laughs> just go with the yak attack facing up. Yep, and so with this and one. And like Gene said before, when you get that last part of. Yeah, watch there, what I'm doing here. So this is together like this. I just pull this out, drop that in, and then snap that back in, and it's ready to screw together. Cool, cool. Just now, like that. pro tip number one is when you get your hardware bag, don't take all the hardware out of the bag because it ends up rolling everywhere. Take them out of the bag as you place them into the black pack. Pro tip number two is as you're doing that, literally just do a little finger turn just to barely get them started, kind of like Gene's doing over there, and just kind of start each one. That way they don't end up falling on the ground. You're out here in the grass, you got to find it. Rolls up under your truck in the garage, you got to do a belly crawl. But you want to put them all in first. That way you don't have to put one, pick up the drill. Put one, pick up the drill. Put one, pick up the drill. You know what I'm saying? So once you do this on one side, you just drill them all in, and then you go back and do the exact same thing on all the sides. And this whole process will go a lot smoother. Because honestly, guys, we want to get to the good part at the end, which is the customization part, which makes this Black Pack Pro so awesome. Now, you got it finger started. Once you put your bit in there, just kind of line it up. Okay, like I said, have it on the lowest torque setting. And what I like to do is just as soon as it touches plastic, I just stop drilling. Yep. I don't even wait for the torque setting to kick in. But again, I've done this. I've rigged a couple thousand got, uh, kayaks. So if you're even a little bit leery about it, do it with the hand-operated screwdriver. But you guys just heard that clutch kick in. Again, just like so. See, my clutch is stiff enough, it'll And the biggest the problem is you gotta make sure that you line that screw up, because if it kicks out to the side, you're gonna have a problem, and then that screw's always gonna wanna find that channel. One of the cool things about the Black Pack Pro and this whole gridlock system is, is as long as you run the screws in these holes perfectly, you can always reconfigure, re-reconfigure, until you find it exactly the way you want it, which hasn't been the, the case with pretty much any other product out there. So 
Now, I got one like I quick. said, you're gonna take these screws and fill them in there, and while I'm doing that, Gene's got another pro tip for you. So it always comes with a couple of extra screws, and as you're drilling in, pay a little bit of attention. If you start to drill, let me do it this way, and you see your, see that start to vibrate or start to rock back and forth? You got a bent screw. And it happens, there's no, I mean, quality control is what it is when, when you talk about screw companies. So you always have an extra one or two of them to fix that. Oh, I just used the same dang screw. <laughs> Let me get it. And another tip is like Gene said, if you get a bent screw, realize that the screws that come with the tubes are the same. And most people aren't gonna put all the tubes on anyway. So you got yep. a little extra screw set up there too. Yep. And just like that. And then I'm gonna tighten everything down with the handheld. All right, so the next step, and this is according to the directions, but work on the, you gotta put the, the rubber feet on. The rubber feet come with screws and in the end bag, in the B kit, you'll get the rubber feet. Why that screw is in there, I don't know. And then Extra. these go with the lid, so just kind of put those off to the side for a minute. And you can see how the rubber feet go together. They go right in the corner, and I just snap them all down. Take a washer, drop a washer in each of the holes. Uh-oh. We are missing a washer. I got gypped a washer. I got one in my truck. Oh, no, I didn't. It's right here. I dropped it. <laughs> I didn't get gypped a washer. <laughs> Trying to make the Yak Attack look bad. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. That's a... I've never had that happen. No, they've probably got the best QC in the game. Oh, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I wish the they could I get with furniture and electronics companies and get their QC dialed in like that. Yep. And this is another thing. You just want to do it snug. You don't want to squish the rubber down. Just get it snug. It's not going anywhere. So like we talked about in the beginning, guys, one of the things you don't really have to worry about too much with Yak Attack is the freaking instructions, even though they worked really hard on it, because like Gene said, the kits are labeled. It's like Barney proof. It's like kit A is first, kit B is second. Chad proof. Kit C is third, you know, and so on and so forth. So it's literally straightforward. All right, so the next thing, we just want to put the lid pads in. I don't know what they're called, the technical term, but they're, they silence the lid when it, to keep it from slamming. And you notice it's got a little bit of a shape right here that, co that contours exactly with the edge of the the lid and it slides right down there. It's, it's, it's hard to put it in wrong. The only way you can put it in wrong is upside down. And there's a mosquito and uh, no screws, no anything. Just put them in just like that. Now, this is where you got to make a decision. We're going to start putting the hinges together and we're going to do that first, but you want to decide which orientation you want the lid. Some people want the USA to be, and you open it up, be up like this and some want it to be that way or whatever. So. You make that decision. First decision point, and since this is actually Austin's black pack, we're gonna get the guy behind the camera to tell us which way do you want this black pack to open? Child, son, we'll get young man. All right, so since I'm a, vi I'm a visual guy, I'm gonna lay out what I need for the hinges real quick. You got a long screw, a long screw, and a couple of, I don't know what size nut that is, really doesn't matter because they're inset, but uh, you've got the, what I try to do is I put, try to, to put the screws in opposite on each of the uh, each of the hinges. So you put the hinge together just like this. You want to make sure that the that the uh, well, you can look at the smooth side and the not smooth side. The smooth side's up on both of them. Slide it together, and then have it like this. Line the holes up the best I can. Sometimes I got to get the drill out. And I probably will with this one and run the screw through because it is a really snug fit. Get it to about right there. Drop the nut in, hold it with your finger. And then just get it started. And I've got it this way with the, the, and I'll explain this later when, I'm, when I put it together, but I've got the screw going this way or the, and then the other one, I'm gonna have it going in this way, the yeah, Basically, you want the nut on the outside on both sides so you can adjust your- You want the screw on the outside. To, I mean the screw. Yep. Nut on the inside. Just remember that you want the nuts on the inside. You always wanna keep the nuts inside. You don't want them out in public, just remember the nuts on the inside. 
And then that way you can adjust your tension of your lid opening and closing. But we'll, we'll review that again in a second. I don't want to review that. We do. The lid part, not the nuts part, silly person. You got to admit though, that's a pretty good mnemonic device, which will help people remember it. Yep. Especially us males who tend to be. Do not want to review where Chad places his nuts. Oh, that's funny. It's like Beavis and Butthead. He said nuts on the inside. <laughs> all right, so here on the top, you've got the holes that are all set up for the hinges. So you've got to, you can put the hinges on any side that you want to. Austin said he wants it like this. Now, if you notice visually. Now explain that one more time because here's the reason. Yeah. You can put the hinges and the latch, which means that that's going to determine which way it opens. Right. So then you also have to think about where you want your rod holders because if you decide to put your rod holders, so again, you just got to think it out a little bit in yeah. advance so yeah with the 16 by 16 it really doesn't make much of a difference what side you put it on some people are just picky about how the the stickers look when you open up the lid mm -hmm. but when you got the 13 by 16 uh that's when you really got to decide which side you want to put it on and how it's going to open when you put the the rod tubes on and, and the and the uh, handles and stuff that's when it's really going to make a difference with the 16 by 16 but if you look we've got a small side and a large side okay don't know. Again, I'm not going to care too much about technical terms. Inside. Just remember that the circus is the big top, so the big one goes on top. <laughs> if you put it the other way, it ain't going to work, and you'll just have to flip it around because that's how gridlock works. So just remember, there's a small side and a big side. The big one goes on top. Yep. Like the circus, the big top. Gene, did I ever tell you I almost joined the circus one time? I am not surprised 100%. He's, he's they invited me to be the bearded lady until they figured out I wasn't a lady. So... That was the end of my circus career. Did any of you guys know Gene used to be an Opry singer? Hit a, hit a note, Gene. Nope. Come on, man. Nope. Do it. I leave my singing for church. Well, I would just say this, for those of you that haven't heard it, Gene has an angelic voice. I make old men, I make grown men cry when I sing. I have too, but they're crying for me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I had a brief career as a male stripper one time. Oh no, here we go. Made really good money. They, uh, they actually paid me to put my clothes back on, and uh, it was a Southern Mail review. A lot of you guys maybe have heard of um, Chippendales. Well, I was in a Southern Mail review called uh, Biscuits and Gravy. <laughs> we used to tour with the uh, same troop from above the, uh, the border. Those guys were called uh, Canadian Bacon. What? Look what I just did. I just talked all that smack. And you put it in my side. And I put the thing on the wrong side. <laughs> well, you know what? This might be my right side, blind side. No, just switch them over. That's what's nice about it. Gridlock. You can just take them off. So and switch again, them over. I put the thing on, worried more about telling a joke about Gene singing than I did putting it where I really wanted it. So now I'm going to take these and move them over here. Nope. You just undo those three and rotate your lid. No, because I got my Made in the USA. Rotate wrong. your lid. Leave this here. No, but it's going to be this way I'm instead of no. this. No, take those three and these three off and rotate your lid. Oh, the, I thought you meant these three. No. Okay, I, I oh. see what you're saying. Mm. Look at the big brain on Gene. Golly. It's because I've done it. Not, not bad for a... He, he's speaking it. from in, inexperience. All right, so what we're looking at here is we've got to install the top of the latches. We're going to get to the bottom of the latches in kit D, and there's a reason why it's a separate kit. I'll tell you in a second. Yeah. Grab me a few screws. Yeah, Grab you're right, because it's the square one. Gosh. It's the 13 by 16, you can't get away with that on. Yeah, I like it. When my, it's square. My daddy loved me. I don't know if you know this or not, but my drill won't put the screws in in reverse. I don't know if yours works that way or not, but. I don't know, but I just scratched Austin's lid. Sorry about that, bro. So kit D, the reason it's a separate kit, but it's still part of the latches, is the screws that you use for kit D are smaller than the screws you use for the top of the latches. So you want to keep those separate. Okay, and now, you got to dry fit this first. Okay, so sometimes when you, when you want to put your hinge in a, a few different places, You've got to flip flop this until it mount lines up with the screws or with the holes with the with the boss hole. What are they called? Hmm? Boss. The screw boss. Screw bosses. The, well, yep. the screw boss is this part on the back side. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 
The biggest thing is you gotta make sure that this slides in before you snap it down. That way you've got, it'll, it'll rotate for you. Okay, and then I take and slide, put, hang it. Line up the hole. Just snug it down. Same thing. All right, guys, so while Gene is doing that, I want to give you a little bit of a pro tip of my own. As you notice here, Gene is setting Austin's black pack up where there's two latches, one on each side. Just because I go into and out of my black pack quite a bit, what I've opted to do on pretty much all of my black pack configurations is to just not use one of the uh, latches and just put the single one in the center. And then when I match that up just like that, I've only got to reach back and push down on one and pop that off. I think it holds the lid just as good. Uh, obviously that's gonna be a little bit more secure, but uh, I'm a big fan of just using one in the center. But again, that's the great thing about the Black Pack Pro is you can make it yours. All right, so the next thing is gonna be the Omni Hook Clips. And because of the old Black Pack, you guys that have used it and everything else, you're automatically gonna to wanna to put your Omni clip Clips all the way up at the top, and a lot of people do. I would suggest you play around with it. Like with my Bonafide, I actually put mine halfway down and I'm, I get plenty of hold from the Omni clips and the bungee cords. I have to tighten the bungee cords up a little bit, but it, it just gets the bungee, bungee cords down out of the way and I can put more things alongside my black pack in my kayak. It makes more room. You know what, room. that's actually a good point. I'm actually making this one for the Old Town Autopilot, so I'm not gonna just automatically put them on there. What I'm gonna do is throw it in the boat and yep. fit it first to decide where I wanna put those clips. And hey, you might even opt to not put them on there. Well, you Austin, know? are you putting these on a bona fide? Absolutely. And I'm gonna put them halfway down and you'll be happy because I'm the man. <laughs> so I'm gonna go test fit this in the boat to determine where I'm gonna put it, and I'll be right back. You just gotta make sure that the hook part that's gonna hold the bungee, because a bungee cord will also strap around this, you just gotta make sure that hook part right there is up is when you put it on. So I gotta rotate this a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go back, not quite halfway down, we'll go down three, three holes. Start the screw. And just do that all the way around. And if you only want to use two of those things, the what are these called? Omni hook, omni hooks. Yep. These are the omni hooks. Well, these are the omni. Anyway, hook holder. Uh, yeah, whatever. But the handles also have a slot that you can slide the omni hooks into on your bungee cord. And so, if you want to forego two of these for some reason, like I actually, have, they also use the curved hook that most oh yeah, bona fides have. Yeah, on the back of the seat. That back seat back holder actually works with the handle too. Yeah. But the Omni hooks, these are come with bona fides, but they can, that's why they, the kit comes with four, so you can put them on whatever kayak you have. But it all, they, just to, so you know, it took me about uh, two months to realize there was a place to hook one on the handle, but we're gonna put these handles on last. Well, it didn't take me two months to figure it out because I was involved in coming it was, up with the it design. It was Chad's idea. I was like, hey, maybe we should put a hook in that hole. Because John actually was, in the hole. John was like calling us last minute. You think this thing really needs a handle? I'm like, yes, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, I do. So then we went into DEF CON 3 mode on designing the handle because it was literally last minute. But what that also tells you is how awesome Yak Attack is at building stuff. They build their own tooling, build their own molds, have their own injection molders, so they can make those last minute adjustments to make sure that the consumer walks away with the best product possible. For Austin, he's kind of like me. He opens his from the side. And so this, can, this is the back and this is gonna be the side. I try to avoid putting any on the side where the hinge is, unless I totally have to because they'll actually bump the hinge and hold the hinge up at about right there, which is no now, big deal. Now, pro tip, you can put a little rubber spacer yeah. to push it out. That's just something that doesn't come with it, but yep. if you really want to, you can space you can it put out. a little couple of spacers. You need about three quarters of an inch. Yep, yep. All right, so here we go. All right, I'm gonna show you how to prep the, the rod tube with the tethers because these are called tether tubes because they come with tethers all right so if you notice in here in the kit we have some of these little bitty plastic pieces smaller quarter inch screws should be six of them because the kit comes with six it's coming with six tubes or five six six 
six for the thir 16 by 16, yep. four for the 13 by 16, okay. and four for the 13 by 13. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the hook. And I'm just gonna do one on video and then I'm just gonna do the rest of them. Okay. Tie a knot in the end of your, end of your bungee cord. Run that bungee cord. You got two sides of this hook, one with the opening on the side, one with the opening towards the bottom. You wanna go in the opening on the side, run it down. Okay, I'm gonna lay it out right there. And I'm gonna take this little hook and that little hook falls into this little slot on the bottom of the rod tube, just like this, okay? And there's enough space in the base of that, and you'll see in a second where you'll be able to just run the bungee into it. Bring it down, tighten it up, get rid of the plastic, and the wind's blowing. So, I take and I run the bungee cord down here, and you can go ahead and tie the knot on there, on the end, even before you run it through that hole. But I like to do it after I run it through the hole. It just makes it just a tad bit easier. Pull it in, pull it tight, pop it into that, into that hook. Well, maybe I was wrong. Let's loosen that up a little bit because I thought you'd be able to do that, but that's not. That's how you do it. But uh, I think it loosen it up a little bit. All right, so yeah, you do have to leave it loose. Loosen that up a little bit. No, you can tighten it down. I tried, but it didn't go in. Hmm. I may have tightened it too much. Okay, so I want you to look right here at the end. There's just a little slot with a divot in the top of it, and that's where your knot's gonna rest. You just slide it in. And that's all put together. I'm gonna give you guys a close up of that right here. Let me do it the right side up. And that's basically what it's gonna look like at the end. Really simple, easy, and this is your tether for your rod. All right. Did now, you go through the main hole or through the side hole? You go through this one. You're doing it backwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead and run this through your hook first. Okay. I'm gonna go the other way, down through that little hole. Okay. Now run it through that hole. Tie your knot in the end. I already tied it. Nope, this end. Okay. Run it under the hook. Well, see, that's why I could get it through there, just because I tied the knot after. <laughs> Well, yeah, untie it then, slide it through. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. I wonder if the instructions say this. I don't care. <laughs> cool. Okay, now tie your knot in the end. Okay, you're gonna run it up to that notch and pop it so in the notch. Basically pull it around. Yep, pop it right in that pop little Pop it notch. in that little thing and okay. then pull, and pull it, it down. Pull it down, you don't have to pull it tight, just pull it down. Cinch it a little bit. Yep, it'll. Boom. All right, Gene, show them your pro tip on how to, or oh. while you're doing that, I'll show them the pro tip. Okay. This is a Gene pro tip though, just <laughs> so you guys know. So with these magnetic drill bits, it makes this thing real easy to install these rod holders. It's just too basically short, it's too short. Find you need, it. a, you need oh, a longer bit. that's what was wrong with my little thing I'm a jigger. So let me show ah! you. I'm gonna show you on Chad's box. <laughs> Give me a screw. You need a longer. You need a longer bit. I came up a little short, guys. <laughs> The last time I did this, I had a little All right, so the extension. biggest pain in the butt with this is getting the two screws in the center holes through the little bit holes right there and keeping them there. So my trick is to go ahead and load this one like this and then put your finger on the back and hold it. Grab your next screw. I can actually do it laying down, but anyway. And mine are not magnetic. Run it through the other hole and hold it with your finger. And then, Chad, where do you want this? I'm gonna put it right there on the side. Okay. This, oh, hot. I'm sorry, no, 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 that's the... Flip it over for yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. My butt, my butt. Okay, so you want it high? High position, high position. High position. Yep, three of them. Three of them, okay. Yep. So, the cool thing is, it's got four holes, but you don't have to use all four holes. But I'm gonna slide this down in there, get down the screw, put it on that top hole. I'm just gonna start that one. I'm not gonna tighten it down. That way I can see whether this one's going into the right hole. Tighten that one down and then go back to this one. Then I grab one more screw 
and the hole on the out, on the base of it is really easy to get to. Really easy to get to, and that's it. So just use your finger to hold the screw in place, and it goes really smooth and fast. Are you stealing mine? No, I put that one together for you. <laughs> a really important thing is to fit is to put the black pack in your kayak first before you start putting your rods in. So like the the bona fide, you can't put your rod tubes in the in the low position on both sides because they won't fit in the tank well. So on the make sure you by yeah on the sixteen on the by sixteen by sixteen you can. So you just got to dry fit it first just to see what height you need to fit in whatever kayak you have, and that way you're not unscrewing and rescrewing all the time. Now you can put as many as four rod tubes on the back by staggering them one low, one high, one low, one high, just to get them all together on, on the right screw. And that also keeps your reels from getting tangled. So think about that too when you're putting these things yep, together. Doing them one low and one high, yeah. All right guys, so while Gene finishes up configuring Austin's box, I'm gonna walk you through how I set my box up, why I set it up the way that I set it up for the Old Town Autopilot, and then I'm gonna walk you through a couple of different configurations that I have here on the ground, just to give you some ideas for how to make your black pack yours. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make this black pack my big water box for my Old Town uh, Autopilot. I also plan on putting veterans in this boat uh, that may have limited mobility. So I decided to put all the rod holders up in the high and dry position. Uh, I took all of the hooks on this side and stowed them to show that you can put them out of the way if you want, or you can put your rod in here, hook that around the thing, and it'll easily uh, secure your rod. If you want it out of your way, just bring it around and hook it onto the side, just like so, and then those tether tubes or tether hooks are out of your way. I set mine up so I could reach it from the back, and again, one of the things that I talked about is you can set these screws up on the outside where you can tighten that up so you can set this tension the way that you want it. If you want that a little tighter, you just take your drill, tighten it up just a little bit, bada boom, and then you can put your lid up and it'll hold it in place. Now, I really wanted to keep this thing simple because I plan on having bigger baits in this, you know, saltwater baits, offshore baits, catfish baits, musky baits. So I wanted my handles on the side so I could carry it nice and easy. And I wanted to be able to strap it down from the front and the back because like Gene said earlier, the handle also has the Omni hook slot in it that works really well with these Omni hooks. So even if your kayak doesn't come with it, simply untie your bungee, lace this through there, lock that in place and it'll hold your black pack nice and secure. So this is the 16 by 16 uh, in the new colorway for fall, the desert sand. So in the 13 by 13, let me just walk you through a couple of other options that we've been playing around with. This is the 13 by 13. What I decided to do with this one is do quite the opposite. This is called the high and dry position. That's where you put the rod holders down to where they actually keep the box off of the bottom of the boat. In particular, I'm gonna be using this in the native FX12 so I wanted it to actually kick the box back a little bit. Same thing, simple rod holder, single, oops, sorry, single location in the front. I actually put this gear track that's specifically made for the grid lock system right in the center so I can put a camera mount there. I can put a, a Visit Carbon Pro. I can put a whole bunch of different stuff right there in the center of my black pack. You can put these grid lock uh, tracks pretty much anywhere you want to. And if you notice, I even did that on the side. I didn't use the traditional rod holders on the side like you normally do because I don't have a lot of space on that side. So I just actually used the 12 inch track, put a 90 degree bracket to the Omni hook or to the um, Yak Attack base and then dropped it in place. And that's what it looks like without the rod holder on it. You could also use this for your camera mount. You can angle it back. You could kick it off to the side. And again, it just gives this whole system makes it to where you can pretty much make it your, your own. Like I said, I've got a, a standard um, Omega rod holder here. I showed the option of coming up and having a little bit more space with the Omega rod holder. You can articulate this thing really easy by loosening these screws up. You can bring it forward and down. You can bring it back and up. You can even run it in the vertical position like a tube style rod holder. But again, the whole system for the Black Pack Pro really allows you to customize it. There's endless options. Like you saw in this video, a couple times we even made mistakes and we decided to move things around, but you can also decide you don't like something once you put it in your kayak and change your mind. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. That's pretty much how you put together a Black Pack Pro. Gene's gonna finish up putting the handle on this thing. We're gonna tie it up with a bow, head to the water, but stay tuned for a future video. We're gonna walk you through some new accessories like dividers that keep your stuff organized 
and some other accessories that are coming out very soon for the Black Pack Pro from the folks at Yak Attack. Dude, that's, that's tiny. It is tiny, but it's, it's so cute, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's so cute, it's like, it's just like a little box. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to smuggle it, you know what I mean? I'm going home. It's, it's so cute, it's just a little cute box. And it's olive green, so not only is it cute, but it's badass. <laughs> it's manly. Manly, manly, man. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, G. Let's hear it. 